top rated Australian is Malcolm Nord, one of Australia's top five and 10,000 metre runners. And Peter Renner, New Zealand's final steeplechaser, he's here, a man who has shown brilliant form over the marathon this year. There's a number of other very good runners in this field as well. There we can see Kerry Ujir and Malcolm Norwood alongside of him. We can see Don Gregg, Tom Burney, uh, Mark Ferlin. Just looking at the New Zealand team for you, comprising of Kerry Roger, Phil Sadgrove from Wellington, Mark Ferlin from Tauranga, and Philip Clode from Canterbury. And the Australian team is Malcolm Norwood, Jim Mack, Quentin Morley, and Tony Smith. Yep, it's a flying start there from Quentin Morley, Brendan. I think he probably broke, but I don't think we'll count that today. So the sun is shining for the first time here at QE2 Park, and it's a rather pretty landscape that we look out from the great sight that you always get at the start of these races, rather like the charge of the light brigade as they hair off from the gun, making their way down the back section of the section of the course to the first hurdle on this 2,700 metre circuit, and they do three and two-third laps for their 10,000 metres or 10 k's. There's Kerry Roger, number two, out to the far left-hand side of the course, and inside of him, wearing number one, is the Australian. Be Quentin Morley, number seven. Well, it's number seven, in fact, it is, yes. Very number seven, Quentin Morley, looks like number one, but it is, in fact, a seven. Alongside of him is Don Gregg, who's running in the New Brighton colours. In fact, the New Brighton team here this afternoon, Kevin O'Sullivan, is a pretty strong one. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it gives the New Zealand team a run for the money. Yes, in fact, uh, the, New the New Brighton team has four New Zealand representatives in it, and uh, the New Zealand team itself, uh, apart from Kerry Roger, I think it'll be the first time for both Phil, for Sil Phil Sadgrove, Phil Clode and Mark Ferlin running in a New Zealand singlet, so the local New Brighton club uh, certainly studded with stars. Yes, much of the New Zealand team's chances here sitting on the pretty broad shoulders of uh, Kerry Roger, the most experienced member of the New Zealand quartet. He ran at the Commonwealth Games last year and he has run twice, as we said, at the World Cross Country Championships in Switzerland last year and again Poland this year. And if New Zealand is to win the men's event it will need a very good showing from Kerry Roger who's there in about seventh place you can see the tall balding fair-headed figure of Kerry Roger he's got two Australians ahead of him at the moment and Don Gregg is in there as well and uh, across the far side in the blue and the white yes I think that's that's probably Derek Frood and in front of him David Rush who ran for New Zealand at the World Cross Country Championships this year in Warsaw so a very competitive event and, of course, uh, missing, sadly, from the event today is the man who has won it for the past three years, uh, Ken Maloney. But even without uh, Maloney's presence, there is still a very even and competitive about this field. That's number five, Malcolm, Malcolm Norwood, Norwood, the leading Australian. He's run, he's run 28.33 over 10,000 metres. Yes, he, I think, is the leading Australian in this field. We don't know too much about this Australian team, but Norwood was telling me that he only missed a selection for the Commonwealth Games last year by two one-hundredths of a second over five five thousand, where he ran 13.36, and that's a very smart time for 5,000 metres. So he's no slug, and as uh, Kevin just pointed out, he also has a very good time for 10,000 metres of 28 minutes and 33 seconds. So it's Australia first and second at the moment, and uh, the first New Zealander, who will be Kerry Roger, is really only in about 10th place at the moment. But it's early days yet. Remember, they do three and two-third laps, 10,000 metres. So it's a very interesting situation we have with Australia in the form of Malcolm Norwood leading the race, but the New Zealand team, by virtue of the fact that they are running as a team, controlling the test match at the moment. Renner, the individual, running in the new Brighton colours in second place. And uh, Peter looks as if he's closing the gap there, going along the, the far side. And he's been in very good form in cross country. His marathon performance, his winning of the Sydney Marathon, the first major victory by a New Zealander in an international marathon since Rod Dixon won in New York. But his form on cross country prior to leaving to Sydney was very impressive. And uh, here he is closing on Malcolm Norwood. In fact, running into that tough head wind over on the far side of the course, I imagine Peter Renner is quite happy to be tucked in just behind Malcolm Norwood, who would have to break the wind and be doing the donkey work. And now, as they come across the top of the course, Renner running on the shoulder of Norwood. A very fluent striding, Peter Renner. Doesn't he look so relaxed, doesn't he? He really is showing no effects at all from that... Uh, 
very bruising marathon that he ran in Australia just three or four, four weeks ago. It was a very tough race and wet, miserable conditions, not dissimilar to the sort of conditions we have here today, although it was a little warmer. And it was a marvellous showing by Peter Renner. I happened to be in Sydney on that occasion and watched the race live, race live on television and uh, it, was a, it was a typical gutsy front-running performance from Peter, Peter Renner once he joined the leading bunch after about 10 k's and they came to a hill midway through the race which turned out to be the decisive point in the event and with his superior strength he just dropped the Australians on the hill and from that point on it was just a question of uh, how much he would win by and he went on to a very comfortable victory in a time of 2 hours 14 minutes and 9 seconds which as we mentioned before is underneath the world championship qualifying time of 2 hours and 15 minutes but the world championships don't interest Peter Renner at the moment. And one of the most interested spectators here this afternoon is Ron Kane, one of the three New Zealand cross-country selectors whose task it is is to pick the New Zealand teams for the World Cross Country Championships which will be held of course at the Ellerslie Racecourse in Auckland next year and so a good opportunity for many of the athletes on the fringe of selection to impress one of the selectors here this afternoon and certainly Peter Renner I'm sure has confirmed beyond all doubt the fact that if he's available he will be a member of the New Zealand team for the World Cross Country Championships next year because it's been a highly impressive performance from Peter Renner and the gap between Renner now and Malcolm Norwood is the best part of 150 metres. Norwood, who led from the gun, you will remember, he hasn't been challenged for second place. He was overtaken on the second lap by Peter Renner, and it's been all one-way traffic, a one-horse race since then. This uh, wonderful form in 1987 of Peter Renner continues. He won the National Steeplechase title at the National Track and Field Championships in March. He went on to record a second place in the Rotorua Marathon, which is nothing more than a training run for him in his first attempt at the distance. Then he, in his first competitive marathon, as we mentioned before, he won it in Australia, and now he's showing again that same good form in beating this very good field here this afternoon. On the last lap, only a few hundred metres to go, about probably 400 metres of the race left for Peter Renner. See again, the very fine form. He's a steeple chaser of class, is Peter Renner. And he's still clearing those hurdles without as much as a, a touch of the timber. And we'll contrast that with uh, Malcolm Norwood, the Australian, who's running in second place, who's still got a handy lead over a bunch of New Zealanders who are starting to narrow the gap on him. But whether they've got enough time left to catch the Australian, we'll see. There you see Norwood still having to take a rest at the top of the hurdle. He hasn't got the same technique as Renner. And some of the back markers being lapped as Neil Lowsley and Philip Claude and number one in the middle Phil Sadgrove of Wellington along with Derek Frude in that bunch at the moment who are contesting third place also when they're tucked at the back by the look of it is Tom Burney so there's a good battle going on for third place at the moment and probably the edge is with the New Zealand team in the test match between Australia and New Zealand by virtue of the fact that there are two of the four man New Zealand team in that bunch there coming around the tacky pass part of the course on the edge of the amusement park across the road onto the grass and he's now only got a few hundred metres to go before he crosses the finish line and for his first victory in the Scatter Up Steeples. Finishes and to your left, others to your right. That may help the situation. Thank you. In the 22 years of the race has been held. Now we're going to have a last and final urgent call to the North Otago officials. We must have your results of the other races. The fastest time in the Scatter Up Steeples, the fastest winning time, is that of 30 minutes and 8 seconds recorded by Michael Gilchrist a couple of years ago and uh, Peter Rennert who's showing that he's still got a bit of a kick left despite the fact that he's easily won this race he's not just going to take it easy down to the finish line as he lifts his work rate and boots it pretty hard for the last 100 metres as well superb performance from Peter Rennert easy winner in the 1987 Scalar Up Steeples well done 27 year old Peter Rennert as he looks back and sees a long way away, the next runner coming down the chute, who is Malcolm Norwood. It looks as if Peter Renner is going back out on the course to give some of his clubmates a bit of an encouragement. Meanwhile, there's Malcolm Norwood. 
who was never headed for second place. And a strong finish coming from Phil Sadgrove of Wellington, but he's left his run just a little too late. He'll have to settle for third place. Tom Burney coming home in fourth place, just ahead of Derek Froude and Philip Clode. So two New Zealanders in the top five, which will probably be enough to give them the test match over Australia, but no doubt about the man that won it, Peter Renner. So the 1987 Skeller Up Steeples won by Peter Renner, running as an individual for his new Brighton club. Malcolm Norwood of Australia was second, and the first New Zealander home from the four-man New Zealand team was Phil Sadgrove. And although we haven't all the official players,